Okay, so previously in our project, uh, I left you to develop the game logic. Uh, so this is now an extension part. You don't need to do this. Um, classes haven't yet been covered in my course, or if you're going on your own, it's just a way to improve uh, the structure of it of your uh, project, and hopefully to make some reusable classes that you could use for other projects. So if you were to make, uh, for example, a poker, poker game, uh, it'd be a lot easier if we had some data structures set up. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a new file, file, new file, not project, a file. Okay, I'm going to select a Swift file, call this data structures. Okay, and this is now included in my project. So when this project compiles, this file will be accessible to all other view controllers. So uh, when I'm in viewcontroller.swift, I'll be able to reference uh, the data structures that I create inside here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to create a data structure for my card. So previously, we just had all of our cards in a list. We had like let, uh, let deck equal, and we had like clubs uh, 09, etc. Um, as a string. So it wasn't the best way to do it, and the reason we're doing that is so we could access those images which I put in there. Uh, but I'll show you how we're going to solve that. So I'm going to create a new class. Uh, this could be a struct, but um, I'm going to show you how to do classes. It's a bit more applicable when you're changing between different languages. So we're going to have some properties for this card. My card has a string uh, for its suite. Uh, sorry, for its suit. Uh, the rank is a string. The value of the card is an integer. And we also have an image for each of the cards as well, which will be a string. Okay, and now uh, we need to initialize. So there's my error. I don't have an initializer for this. So we're going to set, when we initialize, we want to set the rank, the string, and the value. Okay, so it's self.suit. So self.suit refers to this uh, here. And we're going to make that equal the suit. So then we're using this parameter down here to set uh, so the self keyword uh, allows you to reference which one you're using. So I'm using this one here. Okay, and then self dot rank, self dot value, uh, and then the last thing we're going to do is self dot image. Now previously for our images, of course, we were trying to reference our uh, pictures here, so club 06, um, and then inside my view controller, I use this little bit of code here, and I said if the rank is less than 10, then add this prefix of zero. So we don't, we're not going to do that. We're instead of using if statement, we're going to use a uh, ternary statement, uh, which is slightly different, a little bit more confusing, but we can do it all in one line. So if the value is less than 10, question mark then we're going to add the prefix of zero. Uh, we'll get the value, but of course the value is an integer, so we'll convert that to a string. Okay, and if it's not less than 10, then the suit class string value. Okay, so we don't need to have a trailing one. So this will then give us our images for each of uh, the cards, which will reference nicely. Okay, and then I was gonna make a little uh, method for this class, and just a simple description, which will allow us to get some information on each of the cards. So you can use this in your gameplay as well. So this is just going to return the rank, oops, so rank right, of suit has a value of value. Okay, so this will, for example, say uh, the king of diamonds has a value of 13. Okay, so just a, a little bit of um, uh, showing, you know, what, what card we actually have. So if I was to create a new card for this, I would say let new card equal card. And then my initializer comes up. I need to set my suit diamonds rank king value 13. Okay, so that's how I would set my card. 
All right, but we want to do this a little bit more dynamically, so we want to have a deck uh, class as well. So class deck. Uh, we're going to have an array of cards. So just like we did before, uh, we're going to have uh, an array of these cards. And then of course, we need our initializer. So initializer, we're not gonna have anything that we actually need to initialize, it's just going to initialize itself. Uh, so we're gonna get that cards, and we're gonna set that to a blank array of cards. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is to create a deck. Okay, so in order to do this, we're gonna do something very similar to what we did before. Just try and find my method, here we go. Create deck, so I'm gonna copy this one. I'm gonna go over to my data structure. Okay, so I'm still going to have a deck, but it's not gonna return a string, it's gonna return a card. So it's a, instead of a list of strings, it's a list of cards. We're going to have our suits as normal, but I'm also gonna specify uh, what the ranks are. So we're going to use a dictionary for this. So inside each of our um, dictionary items, we have a key and a value, which allows us to give a little bit more detail. Okay, so now I have all my ranks. I'm going to declare a blank deck. And again, it's going to be a deck of cards. And then I can say for suit in suits, for rank in ranks. Okay, and I'll say let new card equal card, just like I showed you before. And this will have a suit, a rank, and a, and a value. So I can say my suit, I can say my rank dot key. So my rank will come from the first item. And my value is rank dot value. And then I can get my blank deck and append my new card. Okay, and that will return my blank deck. So now I have my new deck. Okay, so if I was to use this, I could say, let's get rid of that trading thing there. I could say var my deck equals deck dot create deck. Okay, but at the moment it's gonna ask me to initialize. So what I can use is this keyword static and then it won't rely on the initialization. Okay, so that means I can then say create deck. So I don't need to say uh, deck equals new deck and initialize it, I can just call this and it's not dependent on anything else. So now I can create a new blank deck and then once I have my deck, I can treat that exactly the same. I can append, I can count, and I can shuffle that deck. Okay, so that makes it nice and easy for us to use our deck. The last class that we're going to create is our player, because we actually have two uh, players, and you would have seen uh, throughout our code, we have a lot of repetition, a lot of these properties here uh, can be a part of our uh, main structure. So let's create a player, class player. Okay, we're gonna have a hand. Which again will be cards. Uh, let's give our players names, which can be strings, and we want to have a value, which will be the value of our current hand. Okay, and again, I don't have an initializer, so let's do that. Initialize. Uh, all I'm going to set for this is uh, the name. Everything else we should be able to work out. So self.name equals name. 
self dot value equals zero. So we'll start that off as zero. Okay, I'm going to create one little method. So let's go function check value. And we're going to have this return an integer. And let's say var value equals zero. Or card in self dot hand. So looking through all the cards in our hand. Increment that and add in our card dot value. Okay, and then this can return my value. Okay, so now I have my player, so I could set this up. So if I was to use all of these, I would say var my deck equals deck dot create deck. Okay, so I could then my deck dot shuffle my deck. Uh, if I wanted to find an image, so for example, the first card in my deck is uh, in position zero, I could find the image for that. Uh, if I had the first item in my deck, I could also get that simple description, and that's working perfectly fine. Okay, these errors here are just saying I shouldn't be doing this where I'm doing it, so that's fine. Okay, and then if I was to create a player, Uh, I would call them Daniel. And then my player could look at their hand and they could append it with my deck dot remove the first item like we did before. This will remove my first item from that deck. So then we could say player dot check value. Now there's a bit of an issue with the code at the moment. Uh, so if I look at check value, um, it's returning this value, but it's not actually uh, manipulating my property here, my value here. So this never actually changes, even though this check value works, works really well. Okay, so what we can do uh, is to create what's called a computed property. Okay, it's pretty simple to implement and it uses the same logic that we do have here. Okay, so all we have to do is for this int here, put a bracket, and we can basically create a function. And our function is very similar to what we've already done. So I'm going to cut that, and I'm going to delete the method. I'll paste in there. So we're going to say var. I'm not going to use the word value because we're using value for this here. So I'm going to say new, oops, new value uh, for card in self dot hand new value equals new value plus my card value okay and then I'm going to return my new value okay we can also get rid of this here now because we don't need to initialize it by setting it to zero so now to get my uh, to check my current uh, value of my hand I can just say, oops, print player dot value. Okay, and that will give us the same thing as doing that check value. All right, so I'm going to delete these for now. So these are all telling me I can't do this in this top level because this all needs to be integrated into your app. So this is the next thing you need to do. Um, we need to remove this uh, create deck and we need to integrate our new data structure inside the view load. So the first thing we need to do when you create, so I'll get you started, but I'm gonna leave this up to you, is to create your new deck. And then from there, you're gonna create your new player. Just like I showed you before. And then we can start to, to manipulate our game. So it's up to you now to uh, integrate our data structure into there for your extension.